Hi everyone, welcome to the video. My name is Owen Fox. It's my joy and pleasure and happiness to be here making a video today. And in this video I want to say please sit back and enjoy and love this video. I hope it helps you in your life. And feel welcome to like and share this video with your loved ones also to support the message and help other people. Finally just sit back and relax and take a deep breath and let's get into this. So thanks for joining me and lots of love to you today. So today's topic is about self-love and how human species as a whole we are learning and evolving to actually feel self-love for ourselves and to feel love for other people. And so many of us do not feel actually that we are worthy or deserving of a lovely partner, a lovely relationship, a lovely love life, and a lovely, rich, abundant life for ourselves. In all of our beauty, glory, and divinity that we should really, idealistically, be somewhat entitled to. It's our entitlement, so to speak, to receive the abundance of the universe, of God or spirit, you know, all the abundant blessings that life has to offer. And so many of us do not actually receive and allow into our life what's really wholesome and good and nurturing on so many levels. Carly says, it's daylight, where are you now? <laughs> good question. Diana says, much love. I'm in America at the moment, I'm in California. But, um, so there are, no, there are numerous reasons why we, we do not actually feel, love everybody. Self-love and like huge love for ourselves. And that's, I'm gonna get through some of the reasons in this video which stop us from feeling love. And how we can actually start a new programming, a new feeling emotionally, a new way to feel the love and to change our life. So we attract into our life lovey, loving, loving relationships that serve our highest good. Lovely collaborations and work and career and calling and physical health into our life that really is uplifting and so joyful for us to experience. Stuff like preparing for soulmate type of relationships and deeply satisfying life in the community and in the world where we feel we fit in and then not only do we, we share an inspiration of love and positive energy to people but we actually allow in gifts, love, abundance and wealth into our life also. Okay, so that's my introduction more or less. Now I'm going to get on to how we actually what, what stops us and how to open up, okay? So two steps to, in this video, okay, starting now. So one, why do we not naturally love ourselves deeply and, and have the ability to allow in and attract abundance and love and great behavior from other people? Where people like treat us well and we only accept that. And there's a good few reasons for this which make perfect sense, which I'll explain now. Okay, so you, we learn this from childhood. We learn it from a young age. And it basically starts with our parents who are still growing on their level of consciousness and their ability to either be conscious or unconscious. It, it, it starts with our media, our toys, the children's toys, the magazines, the cartoons, the school, the friends, the media, the television. All of this stuff all of this stuff programs us and develops like develops a ego or a psychological state within us where we are programmed to believe we're unworthy or not good enough or dirty even as well like from suppressing and making us feel dirty about our bodies and sexuality like christian and other religions have taught even lately i've been seeing things on the media where they're talking about attacking other people and wars and fighting even in cartoons, can you imagine? And, you know, what I'm thinking of, what, like, wouldn't it be really nice to talk about collaboration and working together? 
to make beautiful things instead of like fighting and attacking. Like, why are we making things about attacking or fighting? And then there's the whole body part things. Our body is not good enough or clean or dirty and pretty enough. Girls are taught to be a certain way, pretty or sexual. Um, thank you for your message, by the way. Love and thank yous. Thanks, everybody. So boys are taught how to act like a certain macho type of way. Um, and girls are taught how to be a very, like, um, serving the masculine or else to be a very sort of sexual or pretty sensual way, wearing certain clothes. And, and boys to be um, more like, if not like expressing emotions is um, considered to be weak. Whereas it, crying in public is considered to be weak, and it's not at all. So all of this type of conditioning, the magazines portray beauty with like paintbrushed, um, fake type of beauty, and it's not that way at all. So subtle by subtlety by subtlety, we are taught that we are not good enough or beautiful enough, and that we aren't like that creates a huge suppression self-love another thing is as a child if we get criticized or scolded or put down or harshly treated by our parents for misbehaving you know being a child the child will generally take this personally as if there's something wrong or bad with them and those two things feeling wrong or bad it can create self-shame and self-judgment that we're, we're, we're not good enough and we don't deserve love everybody. We don't deserve or are worthy or entitled to love, okay? So all of these add up in our psychological state and then we become a teenager and we think also what we are worthy of depends on other people's opinions. And this has got to do with peer pressure and self and um, approval of other people. So, have you ever seen this in yourself? where um, your, your sense of worth seems to be determined by how much you people's please or agree to other people. And if you don't do what they want you to do, okay, you don't meet their wishes and desires of you, then they punish you, either through bullying or through like taking aggressively what you have, such as like taking your bag or your money or your lunch, okay, it's happened in school or through passive aggressiveness, like ignoring you, not talking to you, not answering your calls, and this can happen in families too. We internalize this and take it personally, and then we think we're, it's us that's the problem and not the other people. So this all adds to us feeling and thinking and believing that we're not good enough. So, so there are a number of factors which contribute to why we don't think self-love and feel lovable. And then what we do is, because we don't feel good enough, we, we get into relationships with people who do not treat us lovingly, and we accept that. Because we think that's all that we deserve, or that's all that we're worth. So we end up being in abusive relationships, and disconnected or narcissistic relationships, where people are very self-absorbed and use us, either in family or relationships or work. And we take crap from other people, and we don't stand up and stick for what we're truly valuable or worth. It's like if you're in a, if you're in a market and you're trying to like sell or exchange something, you think what you're exchanging is worth like a small amount of money and you just like, throw it away and you, you just accept something else like poorer in return. So, so um, okay, so now I'm gonna get onto ways in which we can actually improve our self-love Oh, wait, one last block actually to self-love is trauma. When we have emotional and trauma from the past, what we do is it creates a huge, it's stored in our cells, these emotions that haven't been processed or released. So if we have been abused or bullied or harassed or scared or frightened or basically gone through terrifying or scary um, or very deeply sad losses or experiences when we're younger, even even lately, if we do not actually process, 
the feeling and fully feel the emotion fully. If we do not allow that energy to leave us like turning on a tap, if you do not allow water to flow and it wants to flow from a fountain, if you twist it closed like you're closing a faucet, that, that's all stored and pressurized within you and it creates a blockage of proper circulation of emotions and happiness and joy within you. So we, what we need to do for healing, it's simple. Energy, everything is energy and all an emotion is, is it energy. It's emotion, energy in motion. So when you stop an emotion from being in motion as in moving and flowing, it's like a stream or a pond that becomes stagnant. It becomes smelly and putrefies and it, it's, it's a block. It's the same in emotions. So when we teach children or boys that it's like it's weak to cry, all we're doing is we're closing that faucet um, and if we shame people, it's bad to feel angry. It's not bad to feel angry. There's just certain ways to express anger. And expressing anger can be done healthily for the good of everybody. It doesn't have to be on somebody or at somebody. We can feel anger or say that we feel anger in a way that doesn't hurt anybody. And it creates understanding of everyone's emotions because we all feel an anger or different emotions. And then we don't have to be afraid or embarrassed of our emotions or ashamed as if we're we're tainted because we go around in a society where people act like we're tainted or wrong or dirty or bad or not good enough everyone like I just want to throw in here right now a side topic that whatever way you look there's beauty and, and gorgeousness is in that like if you're bald or if you have no hair short hair long hair blue hair gray hair if you have if you can't grow a beard or if your beard is too wild or, or if you have a certain skin color or your nose is too small or too big or other body parts are too small or big like, like the male reproductive parts or like female parts like we're all, we're all obsessing about ourselves if your skin is too dry or whatever the case may be or if your ears are too big or small your lips or your teeth are crooked or you're missing teeth all these things everybody we, have to, we need to stop focusing on all of this stuff that we think is bad or wrong about ourselves and start loving ourselves. And I'm going to get to ways on how to do this in a moment, okay? But this is just a precursor. If we can just start to accept and love and be, be, accept ourselves and accept our original unique beauty, there's nobody like you or us in the world. <laughs> Emily says, Rascal, where on earth are you? I'm in California, Emily. I'm in California told you in, in America and traveling through America at the moment before I move on to other places next I'll be going to Canada and then I'll be going to some other places I'll keep you all updated so everyone what I want to say is there's no original blueprint of beauty we are all source universe made and we're all beautiful in special unique ways I'm I've been so slim in my life like some people have called me slim when I was in school one one guy used to call me a biafran I didn't even know what that was exactly but I knew it was like a skinny guy like <laughs> You know, like stereotypical Ethiopian or Somalian and that type of stuff, you know. Bless those peop those beautiful people who are like may not have enough food. So like I have a fast metabolism. I process energy, emotions and thought and physical substances like fast. It's really difficult for me to gain weight. So like just accept let's just like let's just give ourselves loving, accepting, positive, cheerful, happy, grateful thoughts, and that's one way you can practice self love. So that's a start. How do we practice self-love? Let me talk about this, okay? I've talked about everything that stops, gets in the way of self-love. How do we circumvent and overcome this, okay? Step two. How? So you start with taking a deep breath. Allow yourself to relax and chill out a little bit for a second. That's how you start, okay? Go for a walk in nature or meditate or have a nice hot shower and essential oils or a bath or whatever else. Watch a funny movie or look at a funny magazine. Do what makes you feel relaxed. Stop taking life too seriously. Stop trying to solve your problems all today. Take a deep breath and take a breather. So that's always a very helpful start how to, how to tackle any life's problems in any topic whatsoever. So, so how to... Let's practice self love again. We start have to rewiring our programming and conditioning. This, the, the, the childhood ingrained 
belief systems that were dirty or bad or not good enough. So we do that by one, recognizing the, the lunacy. <laughs> and I use these, some of these words playfully, a little bit playfully, everyone. I just want to be a bit lighthearted, okay? And I'm not trying to be scientific or technical in this video. I'm trying to be intuitive and a little bit playful and lighthearted to help relieve the energy and to just be a bit more at peace with the seriousness that can happen in life, okay? So we feel really serious in life, but heavy. Like, I've been there, everyone. I've been bloody depressed. I've been want, not wanting to live anymore. I've been down and out. I've been rock bottom. That's how I woke up at an early, started to wake up at an early age, at the age of 24. I didn't want to live anymore. I didn't like or love myself properly. I, I was in all sorts of funny relationships and like experiences in life. I was in addictive and abusive patterns and scenarios and even relationships to a degree too. So it's just, it's taken me a whole lot of mistakes and experiences in my life to get here. Um, so, one, we have to start reprogramming our minds and realizing how off it is. So when we start realizing we've been thinking programmed thoughts and beliefs, stuff that doesn't serve us, then we can start changing our thoughts to say, this is actually healthy, this is accurate, this is right, this is in alignment with spirit. I'm beautiful, I'm lovable. I'm good, I'm clean, I'm wholesome, I'm pure, I'm deserving, I'm worthy, I'm giving, I allow receiving, <laughs> I allow myself to play and be happy in life. I want to lighten, lighten up a little bit and start having more fun. And that's very powerful words to say to yourself in your mind. These are thoughts. So at the beginning, it might sound strange to think this, if you're used to thinking stuff like, and believing stuff like, they don't like me, they won't like me, they didn't like me, they left me, I'm dirty, all these type of things, I'm ugly. So we have to just shift little by little. And we have to accept that it's okay to feel like it doesn't make any sense, this new pattern of thinking, okay? Yeah, thanks Emily, I did. Thanks for your love and support. <laughs> so Emily just made me a, thanks Emily. <laughs> Emily says you traveled to your love. Wow, lucky lady. I'll give that a like. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. Love you for your loving support. And then, yeah. So in my life, it's been a shift to start changing my patterns of thinking. Um, it can be odd. It can feel a bit unusual at the beginning. But then you get used to it more. Um, and we have, yeah. So that's one thing that served me enormously. Another, number two, what served me enormously is... Um, feeling my emotions that I didn't feel or understand from the past. So this has got to do with trauma. So let me tell you a little quick story, okay? I used to have, around three years ago or four years ago, three and a half years ago, whatever, I used to have nightmares, kind of, like scary dreams, and I was having them too often. It was because when I was a child, I was scared, and I lived in an anxious house where two of my siblings were developing stutters out of fear and anxiety, okay? And in the end, I blocked out 99.99% .99 of all my childhood memories before the age of eight. And I used to be scared and living in anxiety and fear, okay? And my dreams were I was hiding or running away, okay? And it was scary dreams. And what I did that made these dreams disappear forever within a week or a week and a half is I started to go back any scary memory that I could have because most of my memories from childhood were either average or some of them were particularly like fearful ones too so what I would do is I would go back when I was travelling in, in Malaysia on the bus and I'd start I'd close my eyes and I'd start remembering the scary memories I had from childhood and these made me feel bad in the moment like emotional but what I did all my life was I was avoiding these memories and feelings. They were still inside of me. So once I started to remember them on the bus, I'd, I'd try and really go into the memories. I'd try really feel the emotions related to that experience. I started to let go of some crying and tears on the bus, which I felt comfortable and safe in and happy with my partner at the time. And she didn't even know about it, but later I told her. So little by little, 
it was just a few dropping of a tear or two. It wasn't bawling, crying or anything. It really is the feeling in my on my body, with the feeling of the emotion. <sighs> I stopped having these scary dreams, everybody. So what I'd recommend, if you can feel comfortable with revisiting your past traumatic events, you're gonna to start to allow yourself to feel the emotions, okay? And allow yourself to feel angry or sad. And if you feel like it, punch a pillow or, or cry, or even scream or shout potentially, it depends how severe or, or just crying is usually number one. Sometimes you might tremble or shake. It depends how intense and how much energy has been stored. So it's really good generally, depending on what you know you're going to be processing. This is healing everyone. This is like going to see a healer, except you're doing it yourself. Okay? And obviously, healers can do stuff that we can't do or whatever else too. And I go to healers. I've gone to healers. I recommend that too. But doing your own self-healing is very powerful, everyone. And you can do it any day of the week. There's so much you can work through. So... Yeah, within a week or a week and a half, I had no more nightmares. And I've never had another scary dream like that ever again, you know. So get comfortable and do your own healing. It's powerful. So let, let go of the stagnant and stored pressurized energy inside of your body through doing this. So that's, that's number two, okay? How to feel love and practice of love. These two alone will actually make transform your life and make you feel fresh, okay? Fresh and freer. Fresh and free. So let's go on to the third one. How can we practice and feel self-love again? We have to start um, thinking in a different way about ourselves, like have a different outlook about who we are and what we deserve. So you have to start reprogramming and writing over the old tapes in your head. So say you deserve a better relationship. Say you deserve money and love and abundance. Start, start giving love, start giving more praise and compliments to other people and to yourself that's going to be a magnificent powerful shift in your body if you can actually start praising and loving like praising and complimenting yourself and other people and appreciating any little good thing you can do any other, any good thing you can think of I mean, about yourself or another person especially those who have traumatized or hurt you think about the, the, the happiest memory that they ever did for you Think about the little thing you like about yourself. So if you can start focusing and magnifying the little things you like and love about yourself, it could be it could be the fact you like your hair, even if you think your skin is bad. It could be the fact you like your lip, it's, you think your teeth are bad. It could be the fact you like your mom for cooking your dinner, even though she, she may have abused you in some way. Like, everyone, no one's perfect, everyone. I've, we've all been abused at different levels and different degrees and different ways. No one is perfect. So at the end of the day, we have to learn to forgive and, and, and understand our own imperfections, okay? We didn't grow up in a, in a conscious society with conscious parents. They did their best. We all made mistakes. So if we can learn to forgive and think this way, which is a new pattern of thinking, everyone, we can let go of so much baggage and start to feel love and appreciation towards people and ourselves. It's like, it's like what you focus on expands. What you think about, you bring about. What you think about, what you think you become. If you want more abundance, start thinking more gratitude and appreciation. If you want to feel love, think gratitude and appreciation. Because gratitude and appreciation and love are very similar vibrations. They're extremely high. So in my experience, when I started doing what I'm recommending you to do, which is focus on the few things that you like about somebody or yourself, and keep thinking about that and talking about that to them and praising and complimenting people, these little small pines. What's gonna happen is you're gonna feel love in your heart. And this is love that I'm talking about in this video. You can love someone who you dislike many things about by focusing on the things you like and appreciate about them, their effort, this has transformed my own life and relationships. And from this place, if, you're in a, if you feel you're in a bad relationship, or if you feel someone has, is disrespecting your boundaries, okay? If you start focusing on the good in them, you can then talk to them from a place of inspiration, from love and understanding and compassion, which will actually touch them and inspire them to be different. And if they're too sick and, or narcissistic to be able to be different, you can then inspire yourself to make a step out of their life and say, 
I love if the, there's a quote I saw on Facebook when your value of me doesn't equal the love that I feel for myself then I will lovingly step out of your life and say goodbye with love so that's a very powerful message okay when your level of self of love for, for me doesn't meet the level of love I have for myself then I'm we can say goodbye from a nice place so that's another way to practice self-love and to practice um, feeling and allowing in love the more love you can feel and give and feel and feel and feel it's not about giving it's about feeling it the more you can clarify and purify your vibration and your thoughts because what you think about you bring about what you think you become and what you focus on expands and what you can envision you can manifest when you start envisioning and thinking and imagining and remembering and envisioning and appreciating in the now, the past and the future, all these positive aspects of appreciation and gratitude and positive visualizations, your vibration is skyrocketed and you're going to feel so much happier and peaceful in your life. <sighs> this is a good video. This is a powerful video. And when you start feeling this, you're going to start being inspired to behave differently. And then your whole life is going to manifest differently. So it's not about taking action from forcefulness. I'm trying to force my life. It's about changing your thoughts and perceptions and attitudes and beliefs and what you focus on. What's focus, focus, focus. This is the most powerful thing that I've learned this year. What you focus on expands like a magnifying glass. And when you talk, think, remember and envision all these beautiful things about yourself and other people and speak about this, you'll be inspired like the way I was inspired to make this video, to make something that's powerful and impactful. And you can change, people will change, they'll, 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 they'll feel your energy, you will inspire them. They will feel your love and acceptance and you, you will feel your own love and acceptance for yourself. So this is how to practice self-love. These are all like little like practical examples. More practical examples, number four or five. So look at the moment and appreciate what you see. So be glad for other people's houses, everyone. Be glad for other people's abundance and wealth. When, you, when you're stroppy about other people's abundance and wealth, you're limiting your own. So be grateful for it. Wish them well. Pray for their well-being. Prayer is a powerful way. Ask and you shall receive. If you need help, pray and ask. Spirit, guides, angels, love, loving light worker spirits, you know. Live in the moment. Get out in nature. Nature is meditation. And there's such beauty and abundance in nature. When you can be grateful for nature, you allow more self-love and love into your life more wealth and more synchronicities the more you increase your energy your 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 vibration and let go of the past blockages recognize the programming and happily and cheerfully with a sense of playfulness and enjoyment think new thoughts you will cheerfully and playfully and enjoyfully actually manifest and take more inspired action with synchronicities so it's a process of inner change first. It's not about trying to force, make things happen. It's about changing your thoughts and beliefs and attitude and perceptions and outlook, and, okay? So that's the, that's the core part, as well as letting all the trauma from the past and the energy, called an E-motion. Making peace with any emotion, shame, guilt, regret, fear, sadness, different kinds of hurt and pain, as well as anger, because anger is probably one of the most, like, suppressed and socially disapproved emotions it's not because of the emotion it's because of how people just unconsciously lash out the emotion and it hurts others so Deanna says everyone needs to hear this message and I agree and I'd really like you all to share this video for your friends and family and social media you think this is a powerful worthwhile life-changing message and I send it from my heart I've been talking about this just a tiny bit lately and I just said I got I just was talking about it a little bit I got to make a video on this. So if you find it hard to love yourself here's another tip everyone tip 5 or 6. If you find it hard to love yourself that doesn't matter. Do you know how you can move into the vibration of love? You can start appreciating and loving and, and being grateful or loving other people. And I don't mean I don't mean giving someone a present. <laughs> 
I mean, tuning into an energy and an emotion and a thought that makes you inspired to give someone a present. It's not about even giving them a present. It's about feeling an energy inside of you called an emotion or a vibration. And this is done through your thoughts and focusing and perception and focusing and reframing your story. Everyone, have you, do you ever have a story of victimhood? They, they victimized me. They perpetrated against me. They treated me this badly. Oh, I got sick. Oh, life victimized me. Life was against me. God didn't like me. You know, all of these thoughts. This is a story, everyone. This makes, this, this is a cemented belief system. <laughs> I've been there. And it's heavy to carry around an image or idea of yourself. So this is a huge point. When you can reframe your story and say stuff like, okay, well, they did the best. We all do our best. Life happens for a reason. Um, life is an experience where we experience things we like and don't like. And for every experience we don't like, we learn what we do like. And so everything has a purpose and a reason in our life, even the hard experiences. Um, I make peace with my past. Um, these are all things we can say to ourselves. Um, this person did the best. I, I, it wasn't just them making mistakes, but I also made mistakes. Um, things serve my higher purpose and especially if I can learn the lesson in the purpose, the experience um, they weren't all bad, I wasn't all bad, I did my best, they did my best this is a rewriting of a story so when we can tell ourselves a different story about what happened in the past or tell ourselves a different story about what happens in the present when we can recontextualize stuff we allow ourselves to love more and have way more happiness and peace in our heart. So this video is about self-love, but it's really also about like vibration and energy and thought mastery and manifesting abundance and allowing in and attracting abundance. This is about the law of attraction, as some people call it as well. The law of allowing, the art of deliberate creation, the, the law of receiving, the law of magnetism, allowing the gates to open to us and allowing ourselves to get what we want in her heart so you will as you raise your vibration and when you feel grateful and loving to other people more you will be ready to attract your soulmate much more and I feel in my life I've basically pretty much done that I've finally gotten to a place of healing and lessons learned that I'm now in the, the most beautiful wonderful delicious and gorgeous and and sexy and delicious and connected and intimate and, and 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 raw and real relationship and joyful and that's that's one of the benefits of raising your vibration you know but I have to say everyone before I end this video I have to say if you want more abundance if you want more happiness and contentment and, and wealth there's one secret that you have to do first okay you have to start appreciating and being grateful for what you have already. So if you're sick, stop focusing on that. Focus on wellness. Think about what it feels like to be well. If you want more money, don't think about what you're lacking money. Just think about what you have, the money you have in your pocket, the food you have on the table, the shelter you have above you. If you want a better relationship, stop focusing on what you don't like about your partner or your, your father or parent, okay, or mother or whatever. Start focusing on what you like and appreciate about them. Their efforts, their, their kindness, their good intentions. Like, for example, my dad wasn't emotionally available. He didn't nurture the household emotionally. In fact, he, he, he caused harm there. He didn't realize, okay? Because he was, he was stunted and, and hurt by his mother. But he did actually go to work to us every day. He went to work for us and he provided and that was his way of he, him understanding what it means to be loving parent and he thought he loved us and he did but he just didn't know how to do it emotionally but physically providing he did a great job and I love and respect him for that so when you can make peace and heal your past relationships and your your own relationship with your past is what I mean when you heal your own relationship with yourself and with the past people and the past traumas you're going to open up to all sorts of new magic in your life and it's a fun and exciting ride and I promise you that so life just becomes better when we purify our mind and our heart and as we heal ourselves emotionally everyone we will naturally be drawn to generally healthier food substances so there's no need to get anal 
and I love and respect that word. I like television. I, I, I like and appreciate anger. And I don't mean I like these being abused or used destructively. I, when I say I like, like means I approve and accept. I accept things ha have certain values. There's good in television. There's, a hammer can be used for good and the bad. There's goodness in a hammer. It doesn't have to be used destructively. Anger can be used beneficially too. You know? Television is good stuff. So many people are so suppressed and judgmental of stuff. So when I say I like this, I like you, it means I, I approve and accept of you. Isn't that a lovely feeling to feel everyone? I like you, I love you. I approve of you in all of your positives and negatives, in all of your pros, cons, and ups and downs and sideways, and all of your emotional flares and all this sort of stuff for everyone. I like you. That's a powerful word for me, like. I love you. I approve and accept of you. When you can approve and accept of others, you will tune yourself to the vibration to approve and accept of yourself and love yourself. So when you approve and accept and are grateful and appreciate all oh, the little things, choose your thoughts carefully. Choose what you focus on, everyone. Choose selectively. Don't be just in the ordinary way of thinking, unconsciously focusing on what you don't have and don't want and don't like. That doesn't create abundance. That doesn't create self-love. I'm telling you in this video, focusing selectively and choosing carefully what you focus on, but what you like, love, and appreciate about life, you, and the world, and other people, this will magnify and blow up your energy field into feeling ecstatic, ecstatic happiness, inspiration, and freedom. Peaceful, light-hearted, free, effervescent inspiration and creativity. Get out of nature, take a break, talk, be quiet, rest, balance your life, and you're gonna be ready. So if you find it hard to love yourself, love, like, and appreciate other people and nature and other things, and then you're gonna be able to, sh you're gonna be able to turn, when you get well practiced with this, you're gonna be able to shine the light onto yourself because you're going to be practiced at this vibration then it's something way easier to say oh I like my nose oh my nose isn't bad after all or oh I like this about myself it's not too bad after all oh it's easier then you can do it everyone honestly so thanks for everyone liking and sharing the video and I really would appreciate it if you did like thanks for all the likes and the shares you know Alison says I love you Owen thank you thanks Alison it's been my pleasure I like and love you too, you know, thank you. So that's the secret how to love yourself and how to love other people. Unconditionally. How to appreciate, how to navigate your thoughts, change your thoughts, change your patterns, change your past. Release your limitations. Open up to a newfound sense of abundance and prosperity and richness and freedom. You know, Bashar, one of my favorite channels, says, do you know what the definition of abundance is? It's having what you want when you need it. It's receiving what you, what, you, what, you, what you need. Getting what you need when you need it is abundance for him. So if you never say you need or want to go somewhere, having that ability, and I've noticed that in my life, like I don't, I don't have a huge bank account, and I, I'm happy to have that in the future. And if I want it, I'm gonna feel what it feels like to have more, more money and richness and freedom. Yeah, be grateful for what I have. That's how you get more abundance, everyone. I've had the ability to travel the world and go different places. Just having enough and even a bit more. That's what abundance is. Having enough and a bit more in most areas of your life. But sometimes we receive lessons of losing something so we can have more appreciation later when we realize the value of what we've lost. For example, I lost my health. I lost all my money at one stage. I didn't appreciate either of them. They meant nothing to me. It's just nothing. It's like being in a dream. I just wanted the best health and energy and fitness ever I've ever met anyone. But who cares? It didn't bring me much that much happiness, really. I wasn't aware of it. I didn't appreciate it. It took me to lose my health. It took me to lose all my money. <laughs> like 100, over 100,000 euros, like 150,000 US dollars at the time. 140,000. I had to lose it all before I could appreciate taking money from the bank. Like appreciating 10 euros. I didn't appreciate that before. I used to pre take a 600 euros all the time to ATM. And my, my friend was like worrying about 20 euros. Imagine that. Imagine taking out $600 from the ATM, the cash machine, and you didn't appreciate it, but your friend was struggling with $20. It took me to lose stuff to appreciate it. So we don't have to necessarily have to lose it all to appreciate it now, but it can help. So that's the lessons of divine life. We've signed into a divine purpose, purposeful life. And everyone, I better go. I gotta get stuff done.
it's been a pleasure to make this video with you and to share a little bit of my life with you. It's been good, hasn't it? <laughs> ah, I've enjoyed it. Um, I hope you have a lovely day. I wish you peace, wellness and abundance. I wish you success in your work. I wish you success in your career. I wish, hope you enjoy your life. I hope you enjoy and appreciate your health, whatever it is you have. Your home, your family, nature, fresh air. Even if you're homeless, I wish you to appreciate your clothes and the kindness of other people and hostels and shelters and blankets and food and money, your legs. Because some people are blind, some people have no legs. Some people have houses and mansions but they're depressed and sad and they don't, they don't appreciate anything. They're so alone and then they're, 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 they're suicidal. So it's not so much what you have, it's what you focus on. And then from this place we can attract and make more, you know? Allow in more. <laughs> Me? No, 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 cool. Thanks, man. Uh, no, I'm okay. okay. I'm okay, man. Thanks very much. I really appreciate that. Thanks. So he just happened to ask me, do I need anything to eat or, um, or water? Maybe he heard me talking about this topic, you know. Maybe he thinks I'm homeless. I don't know. Because I'm just standing here with a bag. Um, so he's very kind, eh? Um, yeah, so... Alright everyone, I'm gonna go, but uh, lots of love and thanks for watching and all your love and support and thanks for your friendship and have a beautiful day. I'll talk to you again, okay? Take care, lots of love. Thanks.